Okay, so what we have here is uh, my 1999 GMC Sierra truck with a 4.8 liter motor in it. Um, what I'm doing here is uh, I'm going to go step by step through the radiator removal and, and reinstallation of it. Um, just a little bit of background. Uh, I've had the car two years approximately, never done anything with the coolant. Uh, about a month ago, I decided to go ahead and change everything out. Uh, found out that uh, it's supposed to have Dex Cool, which is the orange coolant, uh, had green coolant in it. So, um, from what I've read, shouldn't be doing that. So, I went ahead and uh, started the process of draining and flushing and all that kind of stuff. Um, I drained and then flushed, back flushed everything that I could do for probably a good half an hour or so. Um, tried to get the block drains out, couldn't. So, I just kept flushing and flushing and flushing. Put the new coolant back in, and after driving it for about 30 minutes, um, it looked brown and nasty, like it had been in there for years. So obviously, I didn't get it very well cleaned up inside. So I decided to go ahead and do an actual radiator flush with some chemical um, flush material that uh, about it was Prestone Super Flush, I think is what it was called. Um, I put it in there, uh, drove it around for three hours, and when I uh, at the end of the three hours, when I uh, looked at it, the, the coolant looked like it was almost black. So I'm in the process now of cleaning or uh, draining and cleaning and draining and cleaning and flushing and stuff like that. Um, I'm probably since I've uh, done this the flush, I probably flushed it four times. I'm, I've just started putting distilled water in there so I can remove and, and get all the uh, just regular tap water out of there. Um, as I've been doing so, I've noticed a lot of sediment and rust coming out. Initially, I thought it was just dirt, but after looking at it, after it cleaned up a little bit, I could tell that it was a stop leak uh, additive, you know, those powdered, like copper type looking uh, stop leak additives that they put in there. Well, shortly after I started recognizing what it was, my radiator started leaking. So obviously they had used that type of a, of a product to, to stop a leak. And that's the reason that I'm replacing my radiator. So here's where I'm starting. I've already got the uh, the water drained out of the system. Uh, if you look at the picture there, you can see that little blue uh, container. That's uh, right where the uh, the radiator drain drains into. And uh, I'll show you how that's done. Uh, if you have an OEM and an old OEM uh, radiator, the newer ones, uh, the replacement radiators, the one that I just purchased, does not have a uh, a drain petcock. It's all molded for one, but it doesn't have it doesn't have the screws for the for the drain uh, plug or anything. It's just all. I don't know why they do it that way, but it look, but that's what they do. So um, in the future, with with my, this new radiator that I'm putting in to drain the radiator out, I have to uh, uh, disconnect the lower radiator hose, and that's how you do it. So this next shot that I'm going to put up, it'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so here's a little shot of the side of the radiator where the drain hose is. You see that little round looking thing up the, up the left side of the screen? That's where the uh, drain hose actually rests on an older radiator. Um, you flip it up to store it, and then when you want to drain the radiator, you sort of turn it and bring it down. Now, when you're looking down here at the bottom, you can see where the hose attaches, and you can also see the drain cock. It's opened up and it's draining. All right, on a new radiator you're not going to see you're you're going to see the the opening where the the drain petcock plug part supposed to go and you're going to see the nipple where the hose attaches but both of those are plugged they are no longer useful so you can't really uh, uh, use that anymore so don't know why but they molded those still still in there but they're not usable on the new radiators I decided uh, to remove this big cover um, so I could clean under there a little bit better and I, I, to do that you have to uh, remove a bunch of little clips around there in a second you're gonna see me point right there those those clips there's a bunch of them that need to be removed um, it's it's an easy process and in the next video I'll show you how to do it these are actually coming off fairly easy so I figure I'd show you how to do it or at least how I did it I'm sure there's probably a better way to do it but uh, <clears throat> I just took a small screwdriver there's a little uh, indentation here on the side. You sort of pry up on it a little bit. I got a pair of long needle nose because those are the ones I had closest to me. Get it up underneath there. Why is this one not working like the other ones did? 
you know, who knows? And then pry this up as much as you can. It's easier if you just take it all the way out, and you can get up underneath here, and this will usually pry right out, and that's it. That's all you have to do with it. Okay, so the, the first step, once we have the uh, system drained, is we're supposed to uh, remove the upper radiator hose and uh, detach it from the uh, upper fan shroud. Um, so we're going to take off this clamp and remove it. And then right here is the uh, area where it attaches to the, to the fan shroud. And there's just like a little fastener that you just basically pull this straight up and the, and the whole uh, um, radiator hose comes off. Uh, you can if you want. Um, once, you, once you get underneath the air duct, this thing right here, there's a, this is where it attaches uh, the radiator hose attaches up to the engine right up there. You can take that off, but I think I'm just going to sort of pull mine back. And then to facilitate everything else, um, it says to remove the air duct and the plenum. Um, and the way I normally do it is I, I loosen this up and take it right off of the, the throttle body, uh, in, the intake right here. Basically, you just unscrew this uh, clamp here. And then over on the air box side where the air filter is in here, there's three clamps. There's one two and then three right here. The easiest one that I found since I've been taking this off and on so much is to remove this one. It comes off the easiest, it's in the best position to move and it slips off and on a lot easier. So I take it off here, I take it off here and then the radiator hose also goes through um, right here. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. You need to pull this little pin out so so the air plenum and the or the air duct and the um, and the resonator, which is this thing down here, this is the resonator part of the of the air duct, comes out. So um, I'm going to get that done, and then we'll get back to to doing more video. So I'm going to go a little bit out of sequence according to the manual. Seems to me like it's more logical to do it this way. I'm going to go ahead and uh, also remove the fan shroud. And uh, so before I get all this other stuff done, I'm going to take basically I'm going to take off the upper radiator hose, um, the air plenum, and uh, the upper fan shroud and get that taken care of and then it gives me a little bit more room to work around the uh, the hoses and everything so um, the way you take the fan shroud off is there's two bolts at the top there's one right here and then there's another one that mounts but right over here and then there's uh, I don't know if you can see it or not but down in here there's these little clips similar to the ones Let's see, I'll zoom in a little bit. Maybe you can see it. Yeah, those. The center of that pries up just like just like these types that I showed you earlier. They pry up and then you just pry the whole thing out. There's four of them. There's two on each side. There's one there. And there's one right there near where the fan is. And it's the same on the other side. It's a little bit more crowded on that side. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. But I can get you. There's the one. And then there's another one that's up underneath the plenum and resonator here so um, you get those out and that that'll lift right off and um, we'll go to the next step as you can see I've moved removed the upper fan shroud disconnected the uh, the upper radiator hose um, next thing uh, we're supposed to do is according to the manual is uh, disconnect the coolant surge tank hose and the vent pipe hose and the lower radiator hose from the radiator so um, I think what they're talking about is this hose right here, this hose, and then the lower radiator hose is right here. So we need to take that off. I don't know if you can see it, you can see where the clamp is down there. Anyways, I'm, so I'm going to do that and uh, get right back to you after that's done. Okay, so as you can see, I've removed the hoses. Um, the two that fit right up in here, whatever they were, vent, vent and, uh, and surge tank hose, and then also I completely removed the, uh, the lower radiator hose. Um, probably hard to see, but it's down in there. I'm looking at weird angles here. There's the thermostat, and it connects down there at the bottom. Hard to see, but it's the, the uh, lower radiator hose connects way at the bottom of the, of the hose. Okay, so this was the part that uh, it was was uh, after reading through the manual and what I'm supposed to do is was the what I was going to worry about the most, and that's getting these transmission cooler lines out of here. 
I mean, it doesn't appear to be too, uh, too difficult, but on these old vehicles, they become fragile. Anyway, they're held in by, uh, here's what it says, equipped with an automatic transmission, disconnect the transmission cooler lines from the right side of the radiator. To disconnect the lines <clears throat> from the radiator, simply unsnap the plastic collar. That's that sort of yellowish looking thing that's sort of hanging there right behind where the uh, connection is. And, from, and that's a quick connect fitting. Then pry off the quick connect fitting retaining clip and remove the lines. Okay, and it looks sort of like almost like a uh, like a C C clip or something like that. Um, I'll show you a better picture of it once I get it off. Here's what it says: uh, Plug the ends of the lines to prevent fluid from leaking. Have a drip pan ready to catch any spills. Always be sure to inspect the O-rings. Do not remove the clips by pulling straight out. Hold one side with your fingers while using a pick with a bent tip to pull the other side out. Then rotate the clip off. Install clips the same way, not straight on. So I'll try and figure that out once, <laughs> once I get to it. But uh, that's where I'm at right now. There's, there's two lines. You can't really see the, the one that you're seeing in the video right here is the top line. And there's one a little bit farther down, which will probably be a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to go ahead and, and attempt that and, uh, and uh, try and figure out how to um, do this properly without breaking anything. And hopefully I'll be able to pass on some information to you once I'm done. That little job of getting those clips out of there wasn't that bad. Put this out so you can hopefully see it. Once you figure out how the things are oriented in there and what the clip looks like, it's really not that big a deal. You can sort of see that what the clip looks like right there. And you can notice that this back, these bottom parts right here, you can see that really easy um, once, you're, once you're looking at the, uh, the fitting and trying to figure out where. What I did is I got, I used a, uh, a small screwdriver like this. It's sort of hard to see. It looks bigger on the video than it is. <laughs> and I also used like a, it's just a scratch all, this type of unit right there. Let's zoom out a little bit. I used a scratch all and just a little screwdriver. I didn't need to use anything with a with a hook on the end or anything. So like I said, I just had a little flat bladed screwdriver and a scratch all. <clears throat> and as I pried, basically I just got up on one of these parts right here and pulled up. Uh, the top one came off in about five seconds. The bottom one was a little tougher for some reason. It always is because it's harder to get to. Anyway, so that's what I did. Not, uh, not really difficult. Fairly simple, actually. I've got the upper fan shroud out. I was able to loosen up the lower fan shroud and pull it back far enough to where I'm sure that the radiator will come out once I unbolt it. There's only two bolts holding it in right now, one on either end. I, I see no reason to actually remove the fan. At this point in time, I'm able. I've got the the lower fan shroud back far enough to where the radiator should clear when I pull it out. Um, you can sort of just see it sitting there. I mean, why take the time to take that stuff apart if you don't need to? If I have to, I will. But for right now, it appears to me like I don't really need to. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, unbolt the two bolts and see if I can get that radiator out of there. You can sort of see where the two bolts are, one on one on either end at the top. The radiator came out just fine without taking the shroud off or taking the fan off. As long as you can move that lower fan shroud, you have to pick it up off these clips right here. Off of these clips, there's one on each side, you just sort of pick it up. And I was able to push mine back far enough to where it came out just fairly, really easy. So there's really no reason to actually remove the fan on the lower fan shroud if you're using a... Uh, manual like I think mine's is a Haynes manual that I'm going by anyways here's the there's the old one and there's the new one I couldn't believe when I took it off how plugged up it was with crud um, you can see on the ground sort of hard this is this is stuff that was stuck inside the the cooling fins on my you know when before I did this this was my uh, my driveway was totally clean and look at all the crud that came out of there um, there was bird feathers and just mud and all sorts of stuff. Mine was leaking right right around in here. There was water kept after I did the several different flushes and stuff. 
um, water was leaking out around here. So I imagine it was this the, the tanks on the sides that was leaking. There's a gasket that runs through here that's probably bad or something. But th it was coming out here on about two or three of these little these uh, thin or ridges that come up that are on the cooling tank and it was running down the side here. So the repair that they did on it by putting that cool that uh, stop leak actually worked until I went in there and, and did that uh, super clean flush on there. Um, so you know what? doesn't matter. I got an opportunity to work on the truck and learn a little bit more about it. Um, here's the new one. Those, uh, those, are the, those orange things are basically just protectors for the oil, for the uh, trans cooler lines. You just pull those out of there and, they, and this one came with, uh, with new clips so I'm probably going to have to pull those off to get them in and then go ahead and uh, install the lines and stuff like that. Uh, after I'm completely done I'm sure I'm going to have to add a little bit of transmission fluid. When uh, in the manual it says to make sure you plug the lines, and you don't really need to plug the actual lines. You need to plug the uh, the fittings on the radiator because all the cool or the uh, transmission fluid came out of this one. So I caught most of it. I I only have to clean up a little teeny bit of it. Basically, it drained into a into one rag, and that's about it. Installation is basically. Um, just a reverse of removal and uh, there's really no reason for me to, to to go over the whole reinstallation process. I'm going to go ahead and clean up the underside of the, the truck. As you can see down in here it's it's a little dirty. Um, this is underneath where the uh, you can see down here where the mounts are for the for the uh, the radiator. It's a little dirty down in there all this crud. I'm going to clean up the water and a little bit of trans fluid that dripped in here when I was taking it apart and then I'm going to clean up this whole thing and then we'll see where we're at. It's all back together. Um, things went really easily back in. Um, to, honestly to tell you the truth that uh, if, if I wouldn't have been doing this video I, I don't think it would have taken me more than about 90 minutes to do the whole thing from start to finish. But other than that um, I haven't filled it up with water yet to see if I got any leaks. Um, I'm going to do that. If well, here's the uh, final product. Um, what I was more worried about than anything was those uh, two uh, trans cooler fittings, and they seem to be doing just fine. No leaks. If you have any type of uh, mechanical ability whatsoever, you should be able to replace your own radiator if you want to. Good luck.